So that was recurrent neural networks. Now whenever we propose a network what do we do next? Training right. So what we will look at is back propagation through time. This is not a title of a fictional movie or anything. This is an algorithm that we will see. Uh, so before we proceed right, uh, let us look at the dimension of the parameters that we have and I expect you to tell me the dimensions. So I will define some things for you which are very hard. So xi belongs to Rn. So let us be clear about that. SI belongs to RD that means the SI is a d dimensional vector and YI belongs to RK which has k classes ok. So now what is U? What is V? D cross K is it D cross K I am asking Soham ok. No I mean we have we written it as D cross K and W is D cross T sure everyone sure ok right. So these are the dimensions why am I talking about these dimensions. Whenever we talk about gradients what do we talk about partial derivatives or gradients or something we need to know what is the size of the parameter with which respect to which we are taking the gradient because that is what the size of the gradient matrix is going to be right that is why I am asking you to focus on these ok. Now how do we train this network the title of the module back propagation ok. How why do I have a module if I am only going to tell you about back propagation. Do you see any problem with this? Why cannot you just apply the standard back propagation as well? Ok. So, we will try to understand this with the help of a concrete example and we will go back to our example of predicting characters ok. Uh, so, this is the auto completion task and for simplicity we will assume that English has only these three characters D E P and then a stop to indicate that the word has been completed ok. This is what we are going to consider that my vocabulary size is just 4 that means I can only predict one of these k 4 classes k is equal to 4 ok. And at each time step I want to predict one of these things. What is a suitable output function for this task? Can everyone say with probability 99.99 percent soft max ok. What is the suitable loss function for this task? Small pleasures in life right that is all I get ok. Suppose we initialize u v w randomly and the network predicts the following probabilities ok. So, let us understand what is happening. I have fed it d as the input. I have just started training. So, my u, w and v are all some randomly initialized weight matrices right now and so it has predicted this as my probability distribution ok. This is the predictions that I have got from the network and I also know what is the true probability distribution. What is the true probability distribution for the first time step 0 1 0 0 and so on right you can see it. Second time step is also 0 1 0 0, third is 0 0 1 0 and the last one should have been 0 0. So, given the situation and before I talk about learning algorithms what is the first thing that I need to define objective function right. So, what is the objective function here? How many errors do I have? I mean I can make errors at 4 places whether I am making an error or not is a separate case but I can have 4 loss functions. So, then these are the two questions that I am interested in. What is the total loss made by the model and how do we back propagate this loss and update the parameters of the model as usual I am ignoring the biases which is w, u and v. So, if you can answer these two questions then we are done right. If you can do this then we are done. So, the total loss what is the total loss actually take a guess sum of all the losses right good. So, it is just going to be the sum of the loss over all the time steps that you are I mean very logical and what else would it be. And we know that the loss at every time step is so this is the loss at time step t hence y t and what is c actually the true class at time step t right. So, this would be e at first time step e at second time step then p and then stop ok. So, that is what c is. So, this we are all comfortable with this this is the cross entropy loss and I am going to sum it over all the t time steps that I have. Now, for back propagation what we need is we need to be able to compute the gradient of this loss function with respect to w u v. If I give you a formula for the gradient the rest is straightforward. you will just apply gradient this way ok. So, let us look at each of these parameters we will look at the easy one first which is v. So, what is the derivative of the loss function with respect to v have you ever done this in life? Yes. yes. When? I am asking the date 
Okay, so we have done this when we are doing back propagation. This is the gradient of the loss function with respect to the weights in the output layer, and we know how to do that. Right? That's very straightforward, and there is no complication there. And you will see what I mean by complication later on. So all I need to do is take this loss function and compute its gradient with respect to v. There is a very simple chain rule which I can update there, apply there, and I can compute it separately for all these guys, and I can just sum it up. So this is the easy part, this is very straightforward. So for one parameter, we are all set, we know how to do that, right. We can just add up all these gradients, there is some loose notation here, this is actually an addition of four matrices, right. Each of this I hope is a matrix, is it a matrix or a scalar or a vector or a tensor, matrix, okay. So we have already seen how to do this back propagation. This is the smallest chain possible in the back propagation, and uh, we have we have enough confidence in doing this. Now let us consider the derivative of the loss function with respect to W. Just take a minute and see if it's complicated or if it's straightforward. You see a lot of Ws in the figure. Okay, so let's see how to do that, right? So again, the loss with respect to W, or the derivative with respect to the loss. The derivative of the loss with respect to W is going to just be the sum of these four or T derivatives. And by change of derivatives, we can just uh, sum, the de sum the derivative across all the paths which lead from the loss function to W. Is that fine? Right? Whenever we want to compute the de derivative of the loss function with respect to any parameter, our recipe is to look at all the paths which go from the loss function to that parameter and sum up the gradients across those paths. How many of you are fine with this? What are the paths which are actually connecting the loss function to W? There will be T paths, okay, good. So let us see, we will consider L4 theta, this is the last time step. So L4 theta actually depends on S4, S4 depends on what? W and S3, S3 depends on what? W and S2, S2 depends on what? And S1 depends on W and S0, always assume there is this S0. What kind of a network is this? What kind of a function is this? What did I ask you to revise? This is not an ordered derivative, what kind of a function is this? Okay, so we have an ordered network, I will give it to you, I mean it is not P2. Uh, so in an ordered network, each state is computed one at a time, right. So we will first compute S1, then we will compute S2, because S2 depends on S1, there is no other way we can compute S2, then S3, S4 and then finally the loss function. So now we have the following situation that the derivative of L4 theta with respect to W can be written using this chain rule, which is the derivative with respect to S4 and then the derivative of S4 with respect to W and that is that looks manageable, there is nothing fancy here or is it? I see a lot of people that looks manageable, right? Everyone is nodding, even though you have done the assignment, everyone is nodding, even though you have revised the assignment, everyone is nodding. So this part we have already seen, this is not the tricky part. L4 theta by S4 is straightforward because it only depends on this V and so it is fine. That part we have seen. This is the same as computing the gradient of the loss function with respect to the hidden layer. But now let us look at the derivative of S4 with respect to W. What is S4 actually? Sigma W S3 plus B. So now if I want to compute do S4 by, let me just remove the sigma, right? I mean we can always get back the nonlinearity. So I want to compute dou S4 by dou W, so it would just be S3. S3 is again depend on W, right? So that is the problem with an ordered network. In such an ordered network, you cannot compute the gradient of S4 with respect to W, assuming that S3 is a constant. S3 is not a constant, it is again a function of W and W is the parameter with which respect you are computing the derivative, right? That is the problem here. So in such networks, the total derivative has two parts. What are these two parts? Okay, how many of you have revised this? What are the two parts called? Explicit and, I mean at least your language model should be fine, right? Explicit and what else can it be? I mean, come on, at least have that much smartness, right? If you do not read, it is fine. So that is going to be explicit and implicit. What do we do in the explicit case? If you can read the slide, we treat all the other inputs as constant, right? And implicit is summing over all the indirect paths from S4 to W. So let us actually try to derive this whole thing, right? So this is what the total derivative looks like. All of you are comfortable with this, right? I mean, this is all, we have done this in the assignments. I will not go into the theory and all that. You should be comfortable. If you have not revised, you have to be blamed. Sorry for that. But I cannot go into the details of that. But I will still derive the whole thing. 
So this is what it looks like. The plus here indicates that we are going to treat everything else as a constant and just take the derivative with respect to w. And then the implicit part would be this. We are going to sum across all the parts. So this is the part. Okay. Now here again we have a total derivative dou s3 by dou w. So now what am I going to do for that? Again explicit and implicit. Again I have this dou s2 by dou w which is again explicit plus implicit. Again dou s1 by dou w is that fine? And then this is fine right because s1 just depends on s0 which has no connection to w. So this is what your entire formula looks like. Now there is some slight abuse of notation here because what is each of these actually? Scalar, vector, matrix, s4 is vector, w is matrix. The derivative of a vector with respect to a matrix is tensor. You can't do this in your head is it? These three sentences one after the other. Okay. So for simplicity what I am going to do is I am going to short circuit some of these parts. right? So let us, I will just tell you what I am going to short circuit. So I am going to write just for ease notation, ease of uh, coming up with a generic formula. The first term I am going to write as this and this is fair because this is just 1. right? The second term also is fine. The third term I am going to short circuit this part. I am just going to write it as dou s4 by dou s2 and then dou s2 by dou w. And again I am going to short circuit these parts and just write it as dou s4 by dou, w, dou s1 and then this. The reason I am doing this then I can just write it as a very simple summation where I have s4 by sk where k goes from 1, 2, 3, 4 and then I just have the, imp, ex, uh, the explicit derivative of sk with respect to w. Just stare at this for a minute and not a minute actually just 10 seconds or something. If you have any problems with this let me know. I will use my standard trick. If you do not understand this you will not understand anything afterwards. No one is falling for that. Okay, everyone is comfortable with this. Okay. So, so we have a formula for dou s4 by dou w and we have dealt with this tricky situation where we have these multiple paths in an ordered network and hence we had to split it into explicit and implicit derivatives. So we have done all that gory math and we have come up with a simplified formula for this. Okay. So finally this is what we have. You are noting it down right? Okay. I do not see you noting it down. Okay. So now let us look at dou s4 by dou w. That is exactly what we had derived on the previous slide and that was a summation of t terms and for us t is equal to 4. And in general LT by the this was for L4. So in general if I want to do LT then it is going to be this which I have replaced by T and this which I have replaced by this formula. Everyone is fine with this? Whatever this means. Uh, everyone is fine with this formula right? This is a generic formula with respect to any time step. The only thing is that on the previous slide we had derived it with respect to S4. Now I have just come up with a generic formula. Okay. So this algorithm is called back propagation through time because now you have taken care of this ordered network and you have a way of computing this gradient. Once you have this gradient your life is simple because now you can just apply the gradient descent update rule. Okay. So we have dealt with V, we have dealt with W and as the name suggests who will deal with U? U. Okay. Fine. So we will have to find out what it is for U. Okay. But it is going to be something very similar. And I do not want to do it because that is not, I mean it is going to be something very similar. You can do it on your own. But I want to focus on something which is important. 